Hastily answered, no, sir, your offer I refuse. If ever my girl should marry, she'll marry whom I choose and not on a path a carry. She sternly did refuse this boy on a path a carry. No meetings day or night, no letters with such restrictions. At last I thought I might communicate in prescriptions by her whom I adore in token of love were taken. The mixture as before I trust was nicely shaken. Ah, one day I saw arrive a letter which from her sister Implored me to contrive to send her papa a blister. What joy pervades my heart! See, vengeance is now arriving. I'll scarify the part with devilish art contriving. He scarified the part with devilish art contriving. A dose of peppermint, I thought it might please her rather. I sent it her when I sent the blister for her father. But when I called next day, bad fortune had turned the tables. I much regret to say my boy had changed the labels. Oh, ah. And now, my friends, you see the reason for my emotion. The draught of life for me has turned to a bitter potion. I cannot but suppose of what happened, you have a notion. Her father used the dose of Letitia to the lotion. Her father used the dose of Letitia to the lotion. Now let's go back to where we were And if you please remove the chair No, no Rash man Again we say forbear Withdraw the chair Withdraw the chair Young man, I say get out of that What on earth may you be at? Destroy yourself. You shan't. That's flat. Rushman, forbear. Rushman, forbear. Our cruel fate. Our cruel fate. Apples, oranges, 
Lemonade, ginger beer, soda water. That voice, that lovely voice I know so well. Its accents tender make my bosom swell with deep emotion. Ah, a rival here. Heavenly powers, be thanked for that. Once more, the face I loved so well returns, returns to shed a ray of sunshine o'er my solitude and change the night, the night to day. Let me gaze upon thy face and lean upon thy breast and find upon thy noble heart an everlasting rest and find upon thy noble heart. 
Touch. You've had four tarts and a couple of pears. You've had three buns that were meant for the bears. Two bags of nuts instead of the eight. Ten biscuits of various sizes and shapes. Oh. Three packets of super fine lollipops. One ounce of the very best pineapple drops. The largest cake you ever did see. And an half pound packet of ornaments tea. Oh, I've eaten as much as a man could eat. I've gone through a very remarkable feat. From the tuppany top to the kidney pie. I've swallowed as much as I could have. I, how better good man his affection proved than by stuffing himself for the sake of his love. With a bottle of pop, I have quenched my thirst. And now, if you please, oh, I am ready to burst. Four tarts, three buns, and a couple of pears. Yes, once again, some lollipops and pineapple drops. Once again, I've had three tarts and a couple of pears. I've had three buns and a couple of two bags of nuts and stairs. Eggs and biscuits and various sizes and shape three packets of soup and pine lollipops. One ounce of the very best pineapple drops. After such an effort of the appetite, it isn't surprising that Thomas faints. This time it's the apothecary who comes to the rescue with sound medical advice. And Eliza hurries off with a prescription. But in her absence, a devastating discovery is made. As Cowboy loosens Tom Brown's coat, what should he discover but regalia of a most exclusive kind? Oh, hell. Oh, hell. 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 I'm going to faint. He's going to be ill. Oh, no, he is. I'll tell you, he is. I'm sure he is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. It is essential for a man in his condition that he should not be crowded. Pray stand back. It is essential for a man in his condition that he should not be crowded. No change in his position. So the man is the man.
Himmel auf Fleisch. It's now become apparent that the disguised nobleman has lost his heart to Eliza, the realized dream of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah. accustomed as I am to public um, uh, speaking. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking, I feel over, um, over, overcome. No, overwhelmed upon this, um, this uh, occasion. Thank you. Occasion, uh, um, and I also feel that I. Uh, that my, uh, my, um, that your feelings are, that they are, feelings. thank you. If you could, uh, if you could, um, feel, thank you. If you could feel as I feel, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I am. Um, yeah, yeah. I uh, I uh, I uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gather from what you have said that he lies and you fondly adore that you worship and love. Her. Realize me all your life and forever a 
precisely it was my intention that the sense of my words should be such. Your wonderfully quick comprehension and intelligence pleases me much. Quite so, if that be the case, and its state we at last understand, we now will suggest to your grace to offer the lady your hand. <laughs> your wishes with pleasure I meet. Give me time just to change my condition And offer with joy at her feet Myself and my ducal position Our wish is delighted to meet Give him time just to change his condition He will offer with joy at her feet Give himself and his ducal At this point, Grinder the Grocer arrives. The crowd realizes what's going on, but Eliza, returning with the potion for her, her, her afflicted lover, is completely mystified because she's such a simple child. <laughs> I haven't a notion what to expect. What's with the potion? What's with the lotion? Oh, kind of we did too much. Where has he gone? Say, oh, say. He'll come back presently and it will all end pleasantly. Uh -huh. I've never armed a soul in all my life. I don't know what is wrong, as my principles are strong for this hemisphere of wickedness and strife. I have bracelets, it is true, and I've diamonds, just a few, that are locked up in a chest of drawers at home. And a dressing case with tops of gold and diamond drops, but I haven't an idea from whence they've come. And the bouquets come in showers of the most expensive flowers that Covent Garden Market can provide. While it happened once last year that a park act did appear, the very best of thoroughbreds to ride. I have dresses by the dozens, but they're given me by cousins who have known me ever since I was that I. And tickets for the play are sent me every day. But I'm sure I never can imagine why. To Greenwich in the season I have been, and for the reason that I did not like my cousin to offend. 
But I saved my reputation to his very great vexation by driving back to London with his friend. On more than one occasion, after very great persuasion, I have driven down to Richmond with my brother. And once I do remember in the middle of September To Hampton Court I travelled with my mother It is true I went to Dover when the season was just over But then it was with George, I should say Harry And Harry, I mean Charlie Or was it Thomas Parley Was the only man I ever meant to marry it might have been the other, or it might have been his brother, but neither could I ever bear to part. And whichever of the two it really was, it's true that I loved him from the bottom of me. Grocer's daughter, Paul Letitia, is still unable to reconcile her father with her lover, Carboy. He might well become a respectable man in the city, but he remains an apothecary and therefore unsuitable. In desperation, Carboy returns to the bear pit with the rope and after heart-rending farewells, lowers himself into the pit. <laughs> Lightest compounder of potions. Think of the past, think of the last one of your horrible notions. Out of the light, out of me sight, heartless and dutiful child. Is it for spite that you delight to drive your progenitor wild? <laughs>
But even as Esculapius Carboy descends into the pit, an unfamiliar figure appears. To the astonishment of the unsuspecting Eliza, it's her lover Tom Brown, not only fully recovered, but transformed now by his ducal robes. The Duke of Islington has come to claim his bride. What do I see in this disguise? Tom Brown, can I believe me eyes? Cover your surprise, a Tom Brown assumes his native guise. He lies, or oh, if you'll marry me, the proudest lady you shall be that ever London town did see. Eliza, say that you will be the Duchess of Islington. The Duchess of Islington. The Duchess of Islington. Oh, ask me no. Some repairs I much regret they've moved the best 
But I will try the lion's den Once more the bears I'll brave And then And then The sacrifice would needless prove I've heard the story of your love On his consent you now may count And here is double the amount Ten thousand a year is the number Eliza Smith becomes the Duchess of Islington, and the Ducal Largesse smooths the path to wedded bliss of the apothecary, cowboy, and Letitia, the grocer's daughter. And all live happily ever after, in the stations to which they've quickly become accustomed. On that BBC recording of Bolton Row and Arthur Sullivan's musical folly, The Zoo, the part of Esculapius Cowboy was sung by John Bolter, Letitia by Lissa Gray, and Mr Grinder by Ian Wallace. Thomas Brown, alias the Duke of Islington, was sung by Leslie Fison, and Eliza Smith by Joy Roberts. The BBC Chorus and the BBC Concert Orchestra, led by Arthur Levins, were conducted by Ashley Lawrence. <laughs> 